training for the, 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 the longer distances now, that's all. And you look at an opponent and you sort of plan for a certain outcome and a certain tactic during it, but it can all go out the window. I've seen t t big tall fighters. I'll give you an example of a guy called Jack Cullum. He's a tall, long arm fighter and Traditionally, you'd say, right, you've got to get into him, get under his reach, he's going to use his jab. He comes in trading like a little flyweight Mexican, you know, he comes in bang, 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 throwing shots, and, and so you just don't know, it can all, you know, the, all your plans can go out the window when the bell goes and the opponent comes out and does exactly the different thing, but generally, once somebody's been boxing and it's, say they've had 15, 16 fights, there is a certain way that they're going to... Yeah, yeah. You, you study them and, and, and do your best to see if you can outwit them. Billy Joe was the last one to go right through those, yeah. the traditional route. A lot of them just bypass, a lot of them, I think. Been, been a bit controversial, but a lot of them bypass the British because they're not good enough. Well, it might be an harder fight than it is for the yeah. European or something. Let go and win one of these intercontinental belts, at WBC, and it looks lovely. And they call, yeah. call themselves world champions, but you know, and there's a British champion in the same country who's better than them. You know, so yeah, not a bit like Conor Ben, really, isn't it? So you think of it, Frank Bruno never even fought for a British title. It's mad, isn't it? Mm. You know, I love the Lonsdale belt. I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's the best belt in the world. But <laughs> you you train for the ten rounds everything sort of like set out so you, you've got that stamina in you mm. um, and if they do get the knockout lovely but if it not, comes it comes train, yeah. for, train for that always train for the, whatever distance the fight's made at train for it without a doubt so you're fit and ready for it years ago you get a, a call are you boxing some Mexican or some American and oh, he's got a good left hook and, he, and he's tough but that's all you'd know so you, you know, unless you've actually seen an opponent, it's, it's yeah. how, how do you? Uh, it, it works both ways, isn't it? There's loads of footage of Jermaine now. Do you know what I mean? They're going to know everything about Jermaine. Yeah. Well, I think they do. They know he's fit. They're going to be training hard because he's got. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They'll see his yeah. work, right? Well, the good thing about Jermaine is he's always good, good on the weight. So you haven't, you're not, you're not sitting there with a fighter who's starving, who's thirsty, who's not allowed to eat, who's not allowed to do anything. Yeah, he's he's pretty well. chilled out, and you know, there's no sort of like being with someone like that must be that must be that must be hard. Yeah, you know, yeah you've got a yeah, fighter who's absolutely starving, who's ratty, who's angry, because they, you know, obviously changes you. Yeah, we don't have that with our fighters really. I don't think it phases Jermaine to be boxing in um, on pay per view, um, and you don't really, we don't you don't talk about it too much because it's something that you don't want him. Like, I've seen fighters don't freeze think, under the yeah. headlights. Bloody I used to freeze at York Hall, Dulwich baths me. But the actual Jermaine, even when we box out in Belarus, his first fight at um, on live on Sky at Wembley. 
mm-hmm. it just doesn't phase him. And to be honest, as as a as a as a coach and a cut man or whatever, th- there's no difference. I didn't sort of go there and think, "Wow, look at this!" You know, this is or or felt intimidated. It's because our our office is that corner there, and that's all I'm interested in. I didn't sort of get there and look around the stadium and think, "Oh, you know, this is." This is a bit intimidating because it was the first time I'm bo- like Jermaine's boxing in a, in a on a big event. Yeah. It was just like being in being at I don't know Grove Park in the corner with a junior. and develop fighters who, who've got what you call ring savvy, ring noose, where they they, they, they they can do it themselves in there. They can, you know, you should be able to, if you're a professional, ch- change, change things up a little bit. But obviously the advice in, from Adam in the corner is is, is so important that, that they, they listen to. You know, there can be a silly little thing. You might be going around the ring the same way all the time. And you just mm. need reminding. He's a 10 round fight. He can have two bad rounds. You ain't gonna start panicking. If you panic, they feel your panic. You just got to make little adjustments, don't you? Do you know what I mean? And mm. Like you say, bringing the jab back low, a bit lazy with the jab, just little things. But he listens to me, he does listen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, talk, change, we talk during the round, we're, we're watching it and, and talking about what's going on, exactly what the other guys do. We know what Jermaine can do. Mm. You know, so I'm I'm normally looking at what well, that when he's throwing a jab, he's dropping this or or, yeah. or little things that Jermaine might be doing. If he's a couple of little little things that need tweaking up, and we talk during the round, all like while the fight's going on. Fight. I think it was in the seventh round. He had a didn't have a bad round, but he sort of just sort of switched switch off a little it, bit. Yeah. Adam read him the right act and come out and it's like totally different in, yeah. the, in the next round and the round after. You know, he, was, he, he really sort of just a couple of little sort of encouraging words, let's say. Yeah. 